artificial wombs, memetics, and genetics. Such a fascinating futuristic topic. Let's think about it like creation. So, with humans, the sperm meets the egg and it begins gestating inside of the woman. And that's how we procreate. That's how we've been able to evolve such a complex civilization over millions of years. But even all other biological evolution is also experiencing some sort of creation where they also go through a process of reproductive cycles. So all of the species are here due to reproductive cycles over the span of billions of years. This is a key aspect of evolutionary biology and the reason why we are here with as much success as we are, that we procreate and we pass our wisdom down generationally to the next ones. That's why the generations born today have access to internet, computers, electricity, food, water, shelter, all of these things so abundantly. So let's talk a little bit more about when people in the past used to have children. Well, the way that hierarchies were structured in the past, it made it so that you really wanted to have children. You needed to have children early. You, it was almost as though the earlier you had children, the earlier you had an additional asset. This asset being even five children that would be able to help you with your day-to-day -day for survival, whether that be farming for food, whether that be going and hunting, whether that be going and identifying other tools or inventing, innovating new things for people to do, new sort of ways for us to live more optimally and more creatively and more harmoniously with nature. So people were constantly procreating earlier in their lives. And yes, due largely also to the fact that lifespans used to be a lot shorter as well. But this necessity to procreate for this additional asset as a human was crucial. And one could even talk about how the amount of children that you have was gave you more likelihood to have super intelligent children and also that gave you likelihood to have children that were born with some sort of genetic deficits as well. So we have to remember that having children is actually, especially in the past, was a critical asset to our evolution. And people used to have those children earlier in their lives. So now we have what's called exponential technology. We have information technology that is so abundantly at our fingertips that can be communicated across the planet to 8 billion of us. So it went from maybe just hmm, a couple million people on the planet and focusing on genetics was really important to now my ability, your ability to focus on memetics, spreading memes, spreading ideas through cultural information transfer is becoming more and more important. Like I can impact millions of people, you can impact millions, if not all 8 billion people by spreading knowledge and information wisdom across the world. And so people are focusing more on that, like this video transmission, instead of me being out at a museum or some sort of a spiritual gathering, some sort of art exhibit or some sort of a scientific discovery process where I could potentially meet some sort of a partner that could then I could endeavor into having children with and focus my time on just a child versus focusing my time on disseminating this content. People are starting to live longer too. By living longer, you can focus more of your 20s and even more of your 30s on memetics, on climbing your way up a hierarchy in order for you to then, yes, spread your memes further, but also be able to pro procure greater genetic offspring. The higher you up on a hierarchy, not only the less it feels like you're basically clinging to the bottom and you're either suicidal or you're depressed or you're always anxious or you have severe stress that's happening to you because you can barely afford to have your own shelter, your own food. But as you climb up that hierarchy, more and more mates, both women and men, 
identify you as competent that you've climbed up that hierarchy and you get better and better choices for offspring as well. So back in the day, this hierarchical climb was important because you wanted to also get better mates and better offspring, but now you have 8 billion people to choose from for your offspring of course brought that down a couple notches 4 billion are of the opposite sex and brought that down again a couple notches for your age group and brought down a couple notches for your preference so maybe there's only actually somewhere closer to a couple million people that are in the most ideal potential for your candidates and then again you can focus more of your time on spreading memes to climb up that hierarchy now with information technologies and then more and more likely to gain a ideal mate plus more ideal offspring so this is a this is a massive aspect to this conversational point is now we live longer now we focus more on memes and now we're able to go from one to eight billion in terms of communicating memes instead of one to one child which is communicating genes through genetics how much actualization does someone get from having a child or having two children or five children? A lot of the time they get a lot of actualization. There's a lot of profound aspects to having children and it's critical to do so. At the same time, how much profound self-actualization does someone get from spreading memes? So now this has become a new thing. It was becoming a newer, newer thing with our ability to write on stone to paint on stone to be able to write on papyrus to be able to then have the era of the printing press and spread out more of our books of wisdom across the world so this has been evolving really fast but especially the information technology age and exponential technology has accelerated it faster we're going to get to some really crazy things with artificial wombs in a little bit as well because that's the next futuristic step so here's crazy way to look at this as well when you're I'm, I'm almost 27 years old and what happens around this time is that your biology is basically screaming at you and saying find a partner and procreate literally your biology is like screaming at you all the time to do so and that's one of the things that people have to figure out in their lives is okay well when I'm around my early 20s to my late 20s what am I focusing on am I focusing on my career my hierarchical climb or am I focused on finding a mate and having children because even at my age of almost 27 I already have friends that have children that are like eight years old already or they have children that are two years old or they're married now right all of these different things and so, again, there's also people that I know that are 35 years old that don't have children. They're 35 and they're focused heavily on their careers and climbing up the hierarchy as well. So that this innate evolutionary biology pressure that we have around this time period to be like, have children, focus on that now because your genes want to pass themselves on is such a critical way to perceive reality because that in so many ways is exactly what is happening within us at even a subconscious level that we're not always aware of. Your genes want to pass themselves on. So you're being urged to procreate around this age. And this is a really important aspect of understanding it too, is that this is a combinatoric that you're running. You identifying one of those 10 million potentially more better identified partners for you is a combinatoric. So if you procreate with one of those out of those 10 million, you're gonna have a different offspring than if you do with another one. So you're basically trying to optimize your genes by having another partner that has really strong genes so you want them to be very sexually attractive you want them to be very smart very intelligent and you want them to have other very good characteristics like you want them to have a strong metabolism you don't want them to be brought down by lots of disease and that type of stuff so you have this subconscious program going on within you to identify the most optimal mate and do a combinatoric with them to produce an offspring 
And this is crucial for that child's life outcome. The stronger you pick a partner, the better the child's life outcome is going to be. And this is a serious deal. Having children is a serious deal. In so many ways, we have tons and tons of children being born into the world that don't have financially stable parents, that have parents that are too young or not ready to have children, but they had accidents. We need to be way more serious about the importance of bringing children into the world and being really ready for bringing those children into the world financially, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually ready to bring another child into the world and to give them the right tools that they need for their roots to get nutrients and for them to be able to blossom and bring their gifts to the world. We talked about this as well a little bit earlier, but it's so important that within this hierarchical climb that we're all going on, when are you going to identify the right time for you to have those children? So many people see these as like bifurcating moments in their life trajectory. Am I going to spend the next four hours going out to this event where I know there are going to be single men or women there and I'm going to be able to see if maybe some of them are the right mate for me. Or do I spend the next four hours working on spreading memes? Do I work on continuing to grow my career and climb up the hierarchy? Which one and at what time? I'm almost 27, but what about when you're almost 32? Or what about when you're 21? Or what about when you're 42, right? All these different age points as well. When do you invest more time into going and seeking a mate and having offspring or when do you focus more time on your genetic processes or your mimetic processes so again are you focusing more time on your genetic processes or your mimetic processes based on what age you are in your life trajectory and also where you are within the hierarchy as well of competence okay So some really crazy things are happening around the world with what is known as these artificial wombs or this designer baby era that we are approaching. And so if you're not familiar with that, think about it this way. Right now, some of the richest people in the world are taking their sperm and their partner's eggs and they're running combinatorics, but only with one, you know, with two, with two people with one one partnership and they're running combinatorics in the sense that they 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 begin the uh, fertilization process with the sperm and the egg maybe let's just give a number of 16 times so they start making 16 little babies for themselves and this is all really beginning to happen in vitro usually so we're talking about even outside of a of a human even not in vivo but in vitro And you can start doing things like you can start seeing because you make an environment for these cells, for the sperm and the egg to be able to divide and start making two, start making four cells, start making eight cells. And you can then get to a point where you can start screening, right? At a certain point, you can start screening these little clumps of 16 cells, 32 cells as they exponentially grow. You can start screening them for their genetics. So you have 16 of these little combinatorial experiments happening, and then you screen them for their most optimal genetic states. So for example, if you're wealthy enough, you can do something like this. It's already being, it's already happening around the world. Out of the 16, maybe a couple of them actually have genetic issues that have evolved. So we just toss those to the side. We don't want to deal with those. Then there's genetic engineering where you could say, oh, those with the issues, we can actually edit out the issues and we can actually then do the next step, right, with the crazy process, which is you can bring in enhancements. So you can find the most optimal of these 16, let's say, and be like, wow, that's the best one we genetically screen. That one has the most optimal intelligence, metabolism, life outcome scenarios, all this type of stuff. But next is you can do things like be like, okay, well, why don't we figure out, because this is really hard stuff, we're still figuring this out with genetic engineering, but figuring out how to bring their intelligence up another notch, how to bring their metabolism up another notch, how to bring their physical strength up another notch. And then you can add those edits to the process of 
making your child's life outcome even better. And so this is the era of the designer babies where you're literally able to create the most advanced version of your child possible and run all of these permutations, all of these combinatorics to figure out exactly how to make that best child. We all want a healthiest, smartest child. That's a majorly important part of our lives. And we also want, in the case of knowing if there's a genetic issue, to knock out that genetic issue and to produce a healthy child. We don't want a child that has a significant genetic disease. And I have an interesting example here, which is trisomy. Trisomy is having three copies of a chromosome instead of two. And I'm interested to know if, is this biology trying to, per, trying to permutate and find a new combination? Okay, well, some people say that that, that, it, that, that, that it is the case and also that it's extremely harmful because when you have a child that has three copies of chromosome instead of two, you can get things like Down syndrome. You can get significant mental and physical disabilities that prevent people from their North Stars. But could there be a biological permutation that's happening inside of us as we keep trying to have more and more kids where there's some sort of a crazy biological advancement that's trying to combine and say, well, what if a child does have three chromosomes and they become extremely intelligent? Who knows, is that possible? Is it possible for any of these biological permutations to happen where a child becomes significantly more intelligent and maybe that's one of the things that we try to identify as a biological enhancement? There's a lot of single, single point mutations and even multi-point mutations that are causing uh, severe illnesses, sickle cell anemia. There's a lot of these that we're currently figuring out how to knock out and actually make it so that people don't have to suffer from those. But also this is gonna be really difficult to figure out what actually makes for an intelligent child and then try and figure out how to edit a genome for intelligence. But that is totally future we're going in. So you can take right this what this process that literally used to be the fertilization of the new child being gestated inside of a woman literally inside of a woman for 9 months has been the process that it's been since the dawn of time for us. And now instead of it having to be in a woman and literally that woman in a sense it's a it's a gorgeous and beautiful process for the woman to take on the the nutritional uh, the process of distributing nutrients to the child and growing this child within her. It's a very beautiful process. And actually, men around the world can get better at empathizing with women about that process and just being better stewards and better companions for the child that's growing within them and for the woman itself, for them to be going through this process, I think. But now, instead of needing to always have the child gestating within them we have artificial wombs now where the where the child can gestate outside of the woman okay interesting well what about the spirit right this is a great question well what happens to the spirit isn't this the fact that the gestation is happening within the woman that there's something that's happening with the spirit forming of the child in that scenario could a child born outside of the womb potentially have issues with spirit or potentially have issues with the soul or the seat of consciousness right so these are interesting questions as well is there a specific aspect to gestating here that creates a seat of consciousness when it happens inside of the body versus outside of the body in an artificial womb. And so when you take this example with these, let's say these different permutations that you're trying to run of like 16 potential candidates for a sperm meeting an egg and trying to evolve a child, right? that you can take the most optimal one and you can plant that in an artificial womb and you don't even need to be a part of the further development of that child, the evolution of that child in terms of the next nine months. In the next nine months, the child's taken care of, completely taken care of by that artificial womb and you yourself don't necessarily need to spend that much time taking care of it, which is very interesting versus having to literally carry it within you and be very vigilant about it. 
And this has so much to do with the crazy wealth inequality that's happening in the world and these crazy socioeconomic bifurcations that are evolving. So literally things that are already happening, like having our first trillionaires around the planet, these types of things. And when that happens, then what's, what's going to happen? The best, the, the most wealthy are going to get the best genetic augmentations for their children fastest and then is there going to be a speed of change that's just too fast where it's just the children have the best physical the best metabolism the best intelligence characteristics that enable them to completely outpace the other 8 billion people and then what does that actually end up then doing for uh, the overall societal uh, wealth trajectory and the species trajectory because in many ways people that already fly on private jets and have five or ten homes and that spend time on luxury yachts and that own trillion dollar businesses that these types of people already live just vastly completely different lives than the rest of us do but now we're talking about them birthing children in completely different ways to augment their intelligences and make it so that their children are even more superior than just having access to the best teachers and the best curriculums and the best learning styles and the best travel experiences and, and whatnot so we have to be very vigilant about what artificial wombs and the focus on memetics as you climb up hierarchies are going to do to civilization's future so that's why we had this conversation this episode on artificial wombs on memetics versus genetics and what the future is going to be like with all of these things so i greatly appreciate you tuning in thank you i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode i would also love to hear more people talk to your more of you guys talk to your friends your families coworkers, people online about these subjects about artificial wombs about wealth inequality about genetic augmentations about memetics versus genetics really have more convos about this subject it's a fascinating one to talk about everyone also support the artists the entrepreneurs the spiritual leaders the organizations around the world that you believe in support simulation our links are below and you can do cool things like design cool merch and get paid you can also join us on paypal patreon cryptocurrency all that stuff's below and go and build the future everyone manifest your dreams into the world i love you very much thank you for tuning in and i've been really enjoying the sun and even the bugs these insects that are around me because you've got to practice that zen that spirituality life is a blessing one's buzzing in my ear right now it just landed very grateful for you all I'm very grateful for life let's build a bright future together love you very much thank you for tuning in see you soon